Hey guys, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and it is Sunday, so we are doing Breaches of the Week. Now, before we begin, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm actually going to be doing two different videos and podcasts today. Obviously, the one that you are watching or listening right now is the Breaches of the Week, and the next video is actually going to be on a very special breach that is continuously unfolding that I think is going to possibly create a constitutional crisis here in the United States, and that is the data breach of President Donald J. Trump. And we are going to be doing, or rather I will be doing a video uh, on that as well, as well as a podcast. And so with that, let's dive into the uh, regular breaches of the week before we get to that possible bombshell situation that's been unfolding and I've done previous videos on, but we now have some more information that is really prompting me uh, to dive deeper into this. And so before we begin, I'd like to thank Thank Jason Dance, Jacqueline Wolf, and Chris Fallon for sending me, tagging me, uh, you know, messaging me, whatever it was, to give me a whole lot of these breaches. It always helps me out. And as always, if you have a data breach for me, please feel free to send it to me in some way, shape, or form, and I'm happy to give you a shout out as well. And with that, let's start with Diebold or Diebold Nixdorf. They are a major provider of automatic teller machines, payment technology to banks, retailers, etc. They also do voting machines and they recently suffered a ransomware attack that disrupted some of their operations. Now, according to Diebold, on the evening of Saturday, April 25th, the company's security team uh, discovered what they call anomalous behavior on their corporate network. They suspected a ransomware attack and immediately began disconnecting systems and all of that. And so sources told Krebs on Security, a.k.a. Brian Krebs, that Diebold's response affected services for over 100 of their of their customers. Diebold said that the company's response to the attack did disrupt a system that automates field service technician requests, but that the incident itself did not affect the customer network's or the general public. So hopefully Diebold, maker of voting machines, will get that cleaned up. Moving on, we're going to be talking about over 4,000 different Android apps in the Google Play Store that you probably have some of these downloaded onto your phone, and more than 4,000 of these apps here that are using Google's cloud-hosted Firebase database are unknowingly leaking sensitive information on their users, which includes things like email addresses, usernames, passwords, phone numbers, full names, chat messages, and location data. Now, this investigation was led by Bob Diachenko from Security Discovery um, in partnership with Comparatech, and basically they analyzed 15,735 Android apps, which comprise about 18% of all apps on the Google Play Store. With these vulnerability, um, with these vulnerable apps in question, these are spanning games, education, entertainment, and business categories. They have a combined install rate of 4.22 billion times by Android users. And according to Comparatech, and I quote, the chances are high that an Android user's privacy has been compromised by at least one app. In other words, if you're running an Android and you've installed one of these apps, you may have uh, had a data leak. You know, Apple's got their own issues as well. This one is focusing on Android, though. Those specifically that are using Firebase, Google's database service. Moving on, let's talk about the U.S. Marshals Service because they suffered a cyber attack that exposed personal information on approximately 387,000 current and former prisoners at the end of last year on December 30th, and this is according to an agency official. And to quote uh, a Marshall Services spokesperson talking to NextGov, the attackers were able to exploit a vulnerability in the system to extract sensitive, personally identifiable information on approximately 387,000 individuals. So if you've ever been a guest, quote unquote, of the U.S. Marshall Service, present or former, heads up to you. Moving on, we're going to go to the Texas Office of Court Administration. On Friday, May 8th, they got hit with a ransomware attack. Now, this attack began overnight and was first discovered in the early hours on Friday. This took their network on offline, which also took the appellate courts of Texas offline, as well as the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is the federal court uh, uh, jurisdiction there in Texarkana. So that's a big thing. I'm hoping that they've got that straightened out and now locked down. Moving on, we're going to be talking once again about Pitney Bowes. Uh, this is a $3 billion uh, e-commerce and shipping technology provider, and this is the second time it's in six months that they've been hit with ransomware. I remember reporting on the first one at this very video many, many Sundays ago. 
Now, the security incident was disclosed on May 12th after the Maze ransomware group claimed online that it was able to breach and encrypt the company's network. I don't have much more than that, so hopefully Pitney Bowes is going to get this cleared out and hopefully lessons learned. Moving on, we're going to be talking about the West Australian, which apparently is Western Australia's major daily newspaper. Now, the West Australian said their subscription administration email had been accessed externally by an, in an unauthorized manner. And now the hack occurred on March 23rd, but wasn't brought to light um, until it was uh, publicized on April 21st, and then an investigation was launched. Somebody impersonated the administrator of the mailbox, sent out phishing emails to several people, and basically was ac actually able to access their historic conversations and get in there. So heads up if you have anything to do with the West Australian publication. Moving on, we're going to be talking about a company called Stadler. They apparently build trains. That's what they do. And to quote Stadler, Stadler Internal Service Surveillance, Sur Stadler Internal Surveillance Services, there we go, found out that the company's IT network had been attacked by malware, which has most likely led to a data leak. The scale of this leak has yet to be further analyzed. Now, Statler is saying that the incident was likely caused by a professional attack from unknown offenders who could be trying to extort money from Stadler by threatening to publicly publish the information that could harm the company or its employees. And this is very true of a lot of ransomware groups out there now. If you don't pay the ransom, they still dump your data. So they are exfiltrating your data, not just locking it up these days, and then holding that for ransom as well. And we will get to that in my next video as well. <laughs> Moving on. We're talking about XC Eli, Elizon, Elizon, I believe that's how it's pronounced. This is an electric company in the United Kingdom, and on May 15th, 2020, they had a cyber attack. In a short message posted on their website, the company said that the incident only impacted its internal IT network and employee laptops. Um, the company's email server was also impacted and had been taken down. Now, the company did not specify the nature of this particular cyber attack or uh, what was taken, etc., but it's looking like ransomware given what they are saying right here. So we'll see where that goes. My bet is ransomware. Moving on, uh, we're going to be talking about Blue Scope Steel. This is obviously a steel provider, I'm guessing, uh, but they are rather large and international. They got hit with a uh, ransomware infection that was discovered yesterday morning in one of their company's United States-based businesses. This happened on May 14th. It was a ransomware attack, as I mentioned, and I don't know much more about it at this time, but obviously if I get any major updates, I'll let you guys know. Moving on, we are going to be talking about DB8151DD. Now, that is the name of this database that is basically, that's what people are calling it. And quite frankly, this ain't good. This is a massive data breach that exposed the records of 22 million people, but the source of the data is actually a mystery. Email addresses, job titles, names, phone numbers, physical addresses, social media profiles, and on and on and on were there. So the best guess that researchers have is that this is probably some kind of aggregate, aggregated data from a number of various sources that got put together as opposed to, let's say, one major service like a Facebook getting hit, and here we are. So we will see where that goes. And obviously, we're tracking that as well. Moving on, we're going to be talking about Shiny Hunters. Now, this is a group of cyber criminals, and they started uh, dumping a whole bunch of stuff on the dark web marketplaces with stolen data from nearly a dozen companies in the past week or so. Now, this data comprised 73.2 million user records from these companies. And earlier this week, they started selling databases for uh, Home Chef, Chatbook, and Chronicle.com. Now, altogether, these three databases comprise a total of 26 million accounts details being sold on the dark web and basically the initial price is, is varying. I'm guessing they're going to be pretty flexible on pricing or, or bargaining, if you will. The group has also um, continued to flood the underground marketplace with um, other stolen databases and so they have now exposed 11 companies in total in the dark web. So if you hear about the shiny hunters, they're cyber criminals and that is not cool and hopefully you don't use Home Chef, Chatbooks, or Chronicle.com and here we are. Moving on, we're going to head on down to Arkansas in the United States because the Arkansas unemployment system, uh, basically, uh, they've got an unemployment system that is centered around the COVID-19 pandemic, shut down after a data breach of secured information. Now, the system data breach was caused apparently by an applicant who illegally accessed the system. This is according to the state. A probe will obviously determine uh, if any personal data was obtained, uh, you know, if anybody had their uh, data compromised and all that, and they will be notified. Near 
nearly 30,000 30, people in the state of Arkansas have applied to this program. So if you're in Arkansas and you've applied for the Arkansas unemployment system for COVID-19, heads up to you, you may have suffered a data breach. Moving on, let's head back over to Europe and talk about the EU's European Parliament. Now, a cybersecurity firm, and this gets really interesting, said that a huge data leak affecting thousands of EU officials has occurred. A spokesperson for the European par Parliament denies this. Now, here's what's going on. Yash Kadakia, and I believe I am pronouncing that correctly, is the founder of an organization called Security Bra uh, uh, Brigade, excuse me, and he said that his group found a major data breach. The security expert um, basically said he was able to access data and passwords from members. Now, Brussels, where the EU is obviously located, denied, uh, the, their headquarters rather, denied these claims, and so um, Security Brigade actually doubled down and revealed more details of the alleged breach. Now, Mr. Kad, Kad, Yadakia, Yadakia, I think Kad, Kadakia, Kadakia. I, I am sorry with this. I, I, I did practice it before <laughs> I did this video. Um, now, he tweeted, and I quote, this includes data and passwords of 200 plus members of the European Parliament, European Council, and European Commission. This also impacts 1,000 plus mem members of staff at the European Parliament. The data also includes 15,000 plus users, including journalists, members of a number of political parties and institutions. Now, a spokesperson for the European Parliament said they've investigated these claims and they said that no Parliament accounts were actually involved. So we'll see where this goes. This could be a company just trying to make a name for itself or the EU might have a serious issue that they're not either recognizing or acknowledging, and we'll see where that goes. Moving on, we're going to be talking about Stop and Shop. This is in the eastern United States. Apparently, illegal skimming devices, known as shimmers, were identified as part of a routine scan of these locations. Basically, when you go to pay... Uh, you know, at a, like, let's say a, a do-it-yourself, a self-serve gas pump and you put your card in, you can put a skimming device on it that will capture all of your information. These were found at five different locations, uh, apparently, that Stop and Shop is claiming. So if you have visited the Darien, Massachusetts location, the Farmington, Massachusetts location, or three stores in New Jersey, which I don't have the cities on, uh, heads up to you. So heads up Massachusetts and New Jersey. Moving on, let's talk about Magellan Health. This is a Fortune 500 insurance company they had a ransomware incident that was discovered on April 11th and uh, it said that it became aware of this um, apparently during an investigation um, and uh, and here we are they also said that this is the final stage of a longer campaign implying that they had an APT or advanced persistent threat in their network I don't have much more than that but it looks like this was delivered via an email phishing campaign all the more reason to keep training your staff, especially if you're a massive company like that. And definitely if you're a little one, because you probably have less defenses than they do. And finally, let's talk about a company called InterServe, because I think this really underscores something that, that is a very serious issue that we have pervasive uh, you know, throughout the world. Now, InterServe is a company that is considered by the United Kingdom government to be a strategic supplier, and they maintain a number of schools and hospitals, as well as transport networks, such as the London Underground. Now, they are recovering from a cyber attack that took place over the weekend that may have seen details of up to 100,000 people stolen. Apparently, attackers hit the infrastructure of InterServer over the past weekend, about a week ago, and accessed human resources database um, that was basically from an outsourcing firm on the 9th of May and stole information on current and former InterServe employees. This is according to InterServe talking to the Telegraph in London. Now, details include employee names, addresses, bank details, payroll information, next of kin detail, HR records, uh, dates of absences, and pension information. And what this really underscores is something I've talked about and it, uh, before, and it's something that when we are dealing in the cybersecurity field, and I'm sure if you're in cybersecurity, you'll be nodding your head at this statement, we have been focusing much heavier, much more heavily um, in the last few years on the supply chain. You will note that I have done multiple breaches of the week videos where it is not just the company um, that gets hit. The company has to declare a data breach because their third-party supplier wasn't living up to some kind of standard. It gets even worse if it's a health company, uh, just like we had last year in 2019, which seems like a billion years ago, but we had the American Medical, like uh, the AMCA, the American Medical 
a billing association or whatever, that company got hit and it got hit hard because it wasn't really adhering to good standards. And by virtue of it, we had thousands, uh, or at least it seemed like thousands of hospitals and medical facilities that had to declare HIPAA breaches because of that one entity. So this really is important. And if, when we've got strategic suppliers that are literally uh, doing things like uh, making sure that transport networks like the London Underground are actually running smoothly, not to mention hospitals and schools in the middle of a pandemic, hospitals especially, that becomes a huge, huge issue. And it's something that we need to address. So you have suppliers to your business. If they are integral to your business, make sure that they are going through a qualified set of cybersecurity framework uh, questionnaire that you're giving them, uh, you know, as well as everything else, because your data is in their hands. And that trust relationship really needs to be built on trust and verification. So with that, those are your breaches of the week. I hope you weren't infect, uh, affected, but odds are, you might have been. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, guys.